Hey guys, um, in this video we are going to cover um, solving equations on with variables on both sides. Um, the last video we did, we um, did just normal multi-step equations where we're focusing on just one side. However, we're now going to have bigger equations where you are going to have multiple steps on both sides of the equation. So we will have probably variables on both sides or just multiple things for us to do on both sides. Um, before we get started on that, I do want to point um, a new type of solution that we might be getting, um, and that's called identity. Identity, all that means is when you're solving everything, you don't get a num, uh, a num like variable equals number you're going to get something like three equals three or four equals four or negative two equals negative two. It's gonna be the same number equals the same number. This lets you know that no matter what number you guys put in as, um, as the value for your variable, so any number for X, it's always going to give you guys a true statement. All right, so that is known as identity um, or it's also known as like infinitely many solutions. So um how do you solve equations so a couple of things first so step one simplify each side by distributing or combining like terms um on both sides so you'll start with one side and then you'll look at the other um and use distribution or combining like terms step two is to collect the variables um on one side Normally, I like to put them wherever the coefficient is bigger. So if one side is a 2, the other side is a 10, I'll probably move that 2 over to the 10 only because I don't like having to deal with negatives. Um, could you guys move it all to the left side? That way it always looks like a normal equation. Yeah, but I hate negatives. So I tend in, you know, to do it this way because it makes life a little bit easier. Um, step three is that upside down T. So um, doing um, using the inverse operations um, to make our variables by itself or to isolate our variables. And then the last step, you should probably always check your equation and see like, oh, did my answer actually make sense? So you should probably try and plug it back into our equation and see if it actually gives you the, you know, a true statement. So those would be our four steps. So either distribute or combine like terms. Um, your variable should be on the exact same side. So if it's on one and one, move one of them. I normally move the smaller one to the bigger side um, just because I don't want to have to deal with negatives. After that, do the upside down T to do the inverse operation and then check your answers. So moving on, we're going to um, solve some equations. Um, let's start with something very basic. So we have 6x equals 5x minus 33. So we think, step one, distribute or combine like terms, where there's only a 6x on one side. And I can't combine these two because they don't have the same variable. So step one completed. Step two is to do the inverse operation. So I'm going to do my upside down t. And I'm going to look which one is in common. So there's this 6x, there's a 5x, not this guy. So looking at the 6x and the 5x, which one is greater? The 6. So I want to move the 5 over to the other side. So I have a positive 5x. So I want to move that over. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. Again, could I move the 6 over? Yes, but then I end up having to deal with negatives and I don't want that. So 6 Minus 5 gives me just a 1x. So I'm just going to leave it as an x. My 5s went away. And I bring down my negative 33. For this one, very simple. We didn't have to do much of anything. And that's our final step. So I wanted to start off with something basic. And then we'll move forward. So for question 2, again, we think distribute. So I'm going to look to the left. I can't distribute. Look to the right, can't distribute. Can I combine? Nope. Can I combine? Nope. So step one is complete. Step two is to look at your variables and see, okay, what 
which direction are your variables going? So I have a 4x and I have a negative 3x. So out of these two, the one that I probably want to move is my negative 3x. Why? Because it's smaller and I don't have to deal with negatives. So I'm going to add 3x to both sides. 4x plus 3x gives me a 7x. Bring down my negative 10 equals bring down my 32. And my 3x's just cancel each other out. From here, I want to keep my 7x. So I need to move my negative 10 over. So I'm going to do the upside down t. How do I get rid of a negative 10? I have to add it. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides. My 7x comes down. Negative 10 plus 10, that gives me a 0, equals 32 plus 10. 32 plus 10 is 42. From here, I'm going to take that 7, and I'm going to divide both sides so that I can isolate the variable. So I'm going to divide both sides by 7. 7 divided by 7 gives me 1, so I'm left with x. 7 goes into 42 six times, and that's it. And if we wanted to, we could always plug this back in and double check our work, but I will leave that up to you guys. All right, let's go one step further. So each one, we're going one step further, one step further, and we'll figure things out as we go. All right, this does look like a lot of work, but I want you guys to just focus on one side. So let's make the, the right side go away and let's focus on that left side first. So looking at that left side, what do we have in common? Because we don't have any distribution because we don't have parentheses. So what do we have in common? Well, I have two x's. I have a 2x and I have a 7x. So I can look at that 2 and that 7 and I can add them up. Um, 2 plus 7x gives me a 9x. Nothing happened to the negative 9, so it just comes down. Can I combine them? No. This negative 9 does not have an x, so we're just going to leave it like that. Um, let's bring back our right side, and we can simplify that side now. So I'll make the left side go away. So again, do I have to distribute? No. Can I combine like terms? Yes. So I look for com like, like terms. I see these x's. So I have a negative 3x and a positive 7x. Um, different signs, so we're going to subtract. 7 minus 3 gives me a 4x, and it'll be positive because the 7 is bigger. Nothing happened to the negative 34, so I bring it down. I can bring back the left side. And from here, we look at our x's and see which one is smaller. Well, this 4x is smaller than 9x, so that's probably the one I want to move over. So how do I get rid of, or how do I move over a positive 4? Well, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides because that's the inverse operation. 9 minus 4x gives me a 5x. My negative 9 just comes down. My 4x and negative 4x cancel each other out. And I bring down my 34, negative 34. From here, it's just a basic two-step equation. So I am going to add 9 to both sides to get rid of this negative 9. My 5x comes down, negative 9s go away, and I'm left with different signs, so subtract. 34 minus 9 is a 25. It'll be negative because the 34 was bigger. Divide both sides by a positive 5. I get x equals, I have a positive and a negative, so that's going to give me a negative 5. So always pay attention to those negatives. We're trying to keep them as, you know, infrequent as possible. But you'll still probably end up with some. So that was us combining like terms on both sides. So what do you think we're going to be doing on the next slide? Yes, we're going to do all of it. So <clears throat> even bigger. We just keep getting bigger. So I have distribution. I have combining like terms. So it's a lot of stuff that we need to do, but don't worry about it. All we're going to do is just focus on one side at a time. So I would say, you know, use your hand and um, cover one side of it like I'm doing right now. See, you can't even see it. And um, focus on just distributing. So again, like before, 
what am I distributing? Well, I have a subtraction symbol, but I don't have a number right here. So what number do you guys think should go right there? There's that invisible one again. So I'm going to do negative 1 times x. Negative 1 times x is a negative 1x. Negative 1 times a positive 6 gives me a negative 6. And then I'm just going to bring down that 9x. From here, can I combine anything? Yeah, I have two x's. So 9x minus 1x gives me 8x. Bring down that negative 6. Can I combine those two? No, because I don't have a negative 6x. I just have a negative 6. Cool. Bring back the right side. And we can do the exact same thing on that side. Um, I'm going to make the left side go away so we don't get overwhelmed. And I focus just on the right side. Negative 2 times x gives me a negative 2x. A negative 2 times a negative 6 gives me a positive 12. Negative times negative gives me a positive. Nothing happened to that 5, so I'm just going to bring it down. Here, what are my like terms? Do I have two x's this time? No, I have two constants this time. And that's okay. So I'm going to bring down my negative 2x because I didn't do anything with it. 12 plus 5. 12 plus 5 is 17. So I bring that down. From here, I'm going to pay attention to my variables and see which side has the smaller one. Well, I have an 8x and a negative 2x. So I probably want to move this negative 2 over to the other side. So instead of subtracting 2x from both sides, I'm going to add 2x to both sides. 8 plus 2 gives me 10x. Subtract it by 6 equals negative 2x plus 2x gives me a 0. Bring down my 17. From here, we're going to add 6 to both sides. Bring down my 10x. My 6s go away. And 17 plus 6 gives me a 23. Um, I'm going to divide both of these by 10. And I'm going to get x equals, ooh, I messed up. So what I actually wanted to do was keep it as 23 over 10. So let me fix that real quick. I mean, it's okay if we make mistakes, right? I tell that to my son all the time. I was doing this for somebody else and I left it like that. Should have double checked my work. So it should be like that. So do, 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 do. I know. Super awesome editing for YouTube. And you can't even see it because I'm in the way. Yeah, there we go. So again, I'm going to divide both sides by 10. <clears throat> I can't simplify this anymore. I can't divide both of them by 2 or by 3 or by 5. So. We're just going to leave it as 23 over 10. Please do not make this into a fraction, um, like a, a mixed number or a decimal. Leave it as 23 over 10. It is perfectly fine to leave it like that when we're in an algebra class. All right. In this one, this is our last one that we're going to be practicing just um, solving variables on both sides. For the rest of them, I'm going to start covering um, identity and no solutions. And then we're going to do a couple of word problems as well. So what do we do with this one? Well, we have two different types of equations. On the left, we have a certain way. We don't see any parentheses. So all I'm going to do for this side is I'm going to combine like terms. Now, unlike before where I was deleting one side, 
I want us to see if maybe we can do it without having to cover our side. So negative 6a plus 4a. Negative 6 plus 4 gives me a negative 2. Why is it negative? Because my 6 is bigger and that is negative. And then I'm going to bring down this 4. Is it okay for me to move the 4 from being to the front to being behind it? Yeah. Um, in addition, it allows me to do that. Um, with this one, again, I'm going to focus on the part that I need to do first. So I can't add these two guys. So my left side is done. I'm going to distribute negative 5 times 7. So negative 5 times 7. Let me draw it here. Negative 5 times 7. Negative 5 times 7 gives me a negative 35. Negative 5 times a positive 2a. Negative and a positive gives me a negative 10a. And then I just bring down my negative 1. Again, nothing is going on with the left side, so I'm just going to bring that down. And then I look on the right side. Do I have any like terms? Yeah, I have a negative 1 and I have a ne uh, negative 5. So negative 1, negative 35. Both of them are same sign, so we're going to add and keep. Um, nothing's happening to the negative 10a, so I'm just going to bring that down because, you know, it's just hanging out anyways. Negative 1, negative 35 gives me a negative 36. Can I add these two guys up? No, I can't. So now I can do my upside down t and move my variable. So be very careful with this one. Which one is smaller? Is it my 2a or is it my negative 10a? So is it negative 2 or is it negative 10? Which one is smaller? If you said negative 2, you're not paying attention and you need to, you know, when it comes to your negative numbers, it would actually be negative 10. Because what would you rather do? <clears throat> owe someone $2 or owe someone $10? You don't want to owe somebody $10. You want to be able to just owe them $2. So we're going to add 10A to both sides. Different signs, subtract. 10 minus 2 gives me an 8A. It's going to be positive because 10 is bigger. Bring down my 4. And then bring down my negative 36. From here, again, just like normal, I have a positive 4. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. I have an 8a, so I'm going to bring that down. I have, uh, I have same signs, so add and keep 36a. 36 plus a negative 4, negative 36 plus negative 4. I like blanked out for a second. Um, is a negative 40. This poor video. We're going to divide both by 8. And then I get a equals a negative 5. So then that would be my answer. Sorry, guys. It's late and I'm tired. It's been a long day. But I wanted to have this for you guys, so sacrifices must be made. All right, um, halfway there. I know this is a little bit longer than normal, but um, we're almost done. All right, for the next uh, one, two, three, four slides, we're going to be focusing on what kind of answer we have. So all the ones that we did before, how many x's did we find? We only found one x equals some number. That's one solution. So when I have an x equals one number, that's one solution. The other two types of solutions we could have is identity, which is infinitely many solutions. Um, and that's another way of saying it is infinitely many. Um, that's when I have a number equals the exact same number. So it has to be 2 equals 2 or 3 equals 3 or negative 5 equals negative 5. Um, or negative 3.2 equals negative 3.2. However, it can't be like 10 and negative 10. Even though it's the same number, one's positive and one's negative, you can't do that. All right? So let's practice with this. We're going to distribute. So we're going to focus on the left side. We're going to do 2 times 4 
x. So 2 times 4x is 8x. 2 times a 5. 2 times 5 is 10. I can't add those numbers together, so I'm going to leave them like that and bring back our other side, so our right side. Um, and honestly, with that one, I can't do anything with that either, so I'm going to bring that down. Now, if you're paying attention, you will notice, wait, on the left side, I have 8x plus 10. On the right side, I have 8x plus 10. Something's fishy. Well, just to be on the safe side, let's get rid of our x's. So I'm going to subtract x from one side, subtract x from the uh, 8x from the other side. And what that gives me is 10 equals 10. Is that true? Sorry, my computer is lagging a little bit. Is that true? Yes. That is true. So because 10 equals 10, that's always true then this is an example of an identity problem. What that means is that I'm always going to have an infinite amount of answers. No matter what X I put in, it's always gonna give me a true statement. So it doesn't matter what X I have, it's always gonna give me something just like this. So it's an identity. If we do this problem, so I have x minus 1 equals x plus 7. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to get rid of my x's. So I'll subtract x from both sides. And I get a negative 1 equals 7. Is that true? No, it's not. So negative 1 does not equal 7. Since that is not true, then no matter what number I put in, 4x, it will never give me a true statement. That means that this equation is broken. There is no solution that will ever make this a true statement. So again, if you get a number equals a different number, it doesn't matter if it's negative 1 equals 1. Both of those numbers are different. This would be a no solution. Let's do another example of it. So I have this big um, equation. So I have 12x, sorry, my, like if I move my mouse, it's like freaking out. Um, 12x plus x, so let's start simplifying this. So 12x plus x gives me a 13x. I can't do anything with the negative three, so I'm gonna bring that down. On the right side, I have a 5x and an 8x. I'm gonna add those guys together and get 13x. I'm gonna bring down my negative four. And from here, I can simplify. I have a 13x on one side, 13 on the other. So I'm gonna subtract 13x from both sides. I'm gonna cross them out. And I'm gonna get negative three equals negative four. Is that true? No, no, that's not true. So again, what kind of solution do I have for this one? This one's going to be a no solution. Again, why? Because there will not be a time where I plug in a number and I'm going to get negative three equals negative four. That's never going to be real. So that, again, is a no solution. All right, one more. So we have this equation. Again, let's simplify the left side. So what do I have in common? I have a 10 and a 1. So 10 plus 1 gives me 11. Bring down my 5x. On the right side, I have a 7x minus 12x. Different signs subtract. So subtract 12 from 7 gives me a negative 5x. Bring down my 11. Now think. I'm going to give a pause for a second. Is this going to be a no solution or is this going to be an identity? So think about it. Is this going to be a no solution or is it going to be an identity? So let's add 5x to both sides. My, my x's go away and I'm left with 11 equals 11. Is that true? 
Yes, that is true. So no matter what number I put into this equation, it's always going to give me a true statement. So because of that, it's going to be an identity problem. All right, very last question. It is a word problem. Yes, I know you, I hate them all, but it is what it is and we have to get it done. Um, this is gonna take two slides. So I'm going to finish this slide and then we're going to continue it on the next slide. So both this slide and the next slide are the same problem, it's just I didn't have enough space. So a painting company, sorry that it's lagging, a painting company charges $250 ba um, base plus 16 per hour. Another painting company charges $210 base plus $18 per hour. How long is a job for, um, how long is a job for which the two companies costs are the same? So I wanna know when do they both equal each other, all right? So one is as soon as I start, before I start actually, it's gonna cost me $250. And then after that, it's $16 every hour that I work. The other one, I start with 210 and then it's $18 after that, all right? So what part do I not know? Is it how much money I'm making or is it the amount of hours that I'm working? It's gonna be the amount of hours that I'm working. So I'm gonna set X equal to the number of hours that I'm working. You have, whenever we have a word problem, you have to tell me what your variable equals, all right? So what does it represent? So we know that X equals the number of hours, all right? How do we know that? Because it's asking like how long is a job, you know? So we need to figure out how many hours. So how long will it take before both of them are equal? So tell me a little bit about company one. What do we know about it? All right, well, we know that in order to figure out how much this is gonna cost us, we have um, $250, which is our base. So 250, that's never gonna change, plus $16 per hour. So that's going to be represented by 16X. So how do we figure it out? $16 per hour plus the 250 for even hiring the company. For company number two, we have uh, $210 for base plus $18 after that per hour. So it's gonna be $18 per hour plus the $210 no matter what I have to pay that. And I wanna know when are they both going to be the same? So when is company A and company B or company one and company two going to be equal to each other? So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna set them equal to each other. So I'm gonna have 16X plus two, uh, 250 on one side and then 18X plus 210 on the other side. That's how we set them both equal to each other we figure out what X is and we can figure out how many hours it's going to take before they're both equal to each other. So I'm gonna look at 16X and 18X. Which one am I going to want to move? The 16 or the 18? Which one is smaller? The 16. So I'm gonna subtract 16X from both sides. My 16s go away. Um, I'm gonna bring down my 250. 18 minus 16 is 2x, bring down my 210. I'm gonna subtract 210 from both sides. 250 minus 210, so 50 minus 10 gives me 40, equals 2x. And then the 210s go away. Now, we're gonna pause right there. So again, we figured out what the equations are for both the companies and we set them both equal to each other. All right, so it was base 250 plus the 16X, 210 
plus the 18x, set them both equal to each other, and right now we're at 40 equals 2x. On the next slide, we're gonna start right there, same equation, it's just we're gonna continue it. I just ran out of space. Divide both sides by two. Two goes into 40 20 times. So x equals 20. What does that mean? That means that the two companies need to work for 20 hours before both of the companies are going to be worth the same amount of money. All right. And that's it for this notes. Like I said, this was a little bit longer than I had expected, but um, we covered a lot of information today. So hopefully this helps you guys with variables on both sides. Um, remember, one solution is x equals a number. Infinitely many solutions means that I have a number equals the exact same number. So three equals three, four equals four. No solution would be that I have one number equals a completely different number. So they'll never be the same. That's never going to be a true statement. So that's a no solution. And then we have a couple of word problems that we had to deal with. But that's it for me. I will talk to you guys later. Have a good one.